Hey Blockhead, it's Tetris Deluxe on Game Boy Works Color. Nintendo took, shall we say, a conservative approach to innovation with Game Boy Color. And nowhere was that more obvious than with the system's primary launch title, Tetris Deluxe. You remember Tetris from Game Boy Works, right? Over in Japan, that joint bulletproof software and Nintendo creation shipped almost exactly five years to the day after the mainframe version's Russian debut, and it was a modest hit. In the US and Europe, however, Tetris shipped as Game Boy's pack-in, and it helped propel the system to astronomical heights. The game's intuitive design and pick-up-and-play immediacy sliced across demographic barriers and appealed to nearly everyone, regardless of their age or nationality or gender. Tetris for Game Boy continued to sell well long after Nintendo stopped bundling it with hardware. And despite its many sequels and reiterations, people around the world continued to return to the old green and gray version for a quick fix, for a tiny challenge, or simply for comfort. And so, day and date with Game Boy Color's launch, Nintendo also gave us a color version of Tetris. Unlike many color version ofs that would appear on Game Boy Color, Tetris Deluxe is not simply a Ted Turnerized version of the original Game Boy Card. Instead, it's a total overhaul that makes fundamental changes to the mechanics, adds new modes, and includes a battery backup to allow up to three people to store their records or even suspend a game mid-session. Unlike the original portable Tetris, Tetris Deluxe appears to have been developed entirely by Nintendo rather than as a collaborative effort. The game doesn't include any credits, but multiple reliable sources, including Giant Bomb and the Kyoto Report, cite longtime Nintendo R&D One veterans Hiroji Kiyotake and Takehiro Izushi as the leads on this project, and there's no information online to suggest outside contractors like Tosei or Minakuchi Engineering contributed to the cause. This would line up with Nintendo's usual practices. From what I've been able to parse, Nintendo has always preferred to assign internal teams to work on critical new releases or critical new platforms, because who knows the hardware better than Nintendo's own people? And Tetris Deluxe was definitely mission critical. In 1998, Nintendo had no way to know if the Pokemon series would replicate its Japanese success abroad. And in any case, that game had been made for the original Game Boy hardware. Tetris Deluxe, designed for Game Boy Color, was a key component in the Game Boy Color's value proposition. It's Tetris, but better. Of course, Tetris Deluxe could also run on original Game Boy hardware. Nintendo hedged its bets for the Game Boy Color launch, and released most of its early games as hybrid carts capable of booting on monochrome hardware. The first truly color-only title, Kemco's Top Gear Pocket, wouldn't ship until April of 1999. The hybrid carts, which shipped in black cases rather than gray, typically offered advanced features on Game Boy Color as well as enhancements for Super Game Boy. The idea was to make them playable on any Game Boy hardware while nudging players to consider upgrading to color for the optimal experience. Tetris Deluxe still includes its new modes, mechanics, and save features on older hardware. On Super Game Boy, it uses the device's default color palette and simply throws in a fancy custom border. It's only on Game Boy Color that the visuals pop. Well, maybe pop is the wrong word here. The color palette is pretty garish, as would be the case for a great many Game Boy Color releases. The pieces are neatly defined by a variety of hues, but these tend to clash with the searingly bright tones of the well backdrop. We're not talking eye strain on the level of Virtual Boy, but it ain't pretty. However, it is a bit easier to play than monochrome versions of the game, because it's easier to see what piece is being previewed out of the corner of your eye. For most people, it's easier to parse color with peripheral vision than it is shape. And again, Tetris Deluxe includes some tweaks to the rule set that can be equally helpful in chasing those high scores. The rules of Tetris evolved pretty dramatically over the course of the 90s and into the 21st century. Today, the Tetris company requires licensees to adhere to specific physics and design standards, including things like SRS rotation and infinite spin. This is all pretty much in the weeds and involves a lot of extremely granular mechanical details, like standardizing the specific axis around which pieces rotate, but it's why something like Tetris 99 feels so different from Game Boy Tetris, even when you're using the Game Boy skin. The point here is that Tetris Deluxe arrived before Tetris's masters had entirely locked down the rule set, so its design feels transitional. It plays a little differently than Game Boy Tetris, granting players more leniency in locking down a dropped piece than in the older game. In a nice touch, there's a slight one-pixel displacement effect on the blocks to signify they're being set into place. 
which is a subtle element that helps combat the tendency to accidentally move a piece out of alignment before it settles while trying to get a jump on the placement of the next block. At the same time, Tetris Deluxe doesn't contain all the modern rules of the game either. The result is a one-of-a-kind take on the game. Not quite so unique as V-Tetris, but it's a subtle variation on standard Tetris that's quite highly regarded by some players, although admittedly, some still swear exclusively on the original Game Boy version. Love the differences or hate them, Tetris Deluxe is still Tetris, with all that entails. Seven different falling block types, Tetraminos, drop into a well and pile up. Only by creating an unbroken horizontal line of bricks can you clear the blocks away. The more lines you clear at once, the more points you're awarded, with your aspirational goal being a Tetris, using an eye block to remove four lines in a single action. For every 10 lines you complete, the game increases the speed at which blocks drop, until you're ultimately left incapable of keeping up with the pace, and the block pile reaches the kill line at the top of the screen. Game over. Well, that's how it works in the basic marathon mode anyway. Tetris Deluxe includes three other play modes, Ultra, 40 lines, and Versus Computer. Ultra mode works more or less like Marathon, the difference being that instead of playing until you hit the kill line, you'd rather have three minutes to clear as many lines as possible and earn the highest score you can. 40 lines reverses that. Instead of giving you a time limit, it challenges you to clear 40 lines in the fastest time possible. And finally, the versus computer mode is essentially the same game as the two-player mode, only with the CPU as your opponent. This plays basically like Marathon mode, with the addition of a small meter on the left side of the screen. You can't actually see the CPU's performance or track how their blocks are piling up. Instead, all you have to go by is the thin red line to the left, which simply indicates the highest block in their well. A high red meter is possibly a good thing since it might mean the CPU is in trouble and about to hit the kill line, but it could also mean bad news for you if the CPU is secretly setting up a string of Tetrises. As in most competitive puzzlers, the challenge here isn't simply to outplay the opponent in your own space. There's also an element of interaction as you clear lines. Anytime you clear away two or more lines in a single move, you send those cleared away blocks over to the other player's well, or in this case, the CPU's well. The reverse also holds true, which creates an element of risk. It's all fine and good to build up your well to be able to clear four lines at once, but there's never a guarantee the game will deal you one of those critical eye blocks in a timely fashion. Indeed, Tetris Deluxe seems to be far stingier with them than the 1 in 7 odds of their appearance should dictate, and creating incomplete towers of Tetris-ready structures in hopes of a timely eye block is a great way to leave yourself vulnerable to having the CPU opponent wipe you out by settling for a string of merely two or three line combos. In short, Tetris Deluxe offers a respectable variety of play options. Sure, Tetris is a well-worn game concept, but when it comes to Tetris, well-worn is an unkind way of saying timeless. The mechanical tweaks present here are admittedly a matter of taste, and not everyone will enjoy them. Aesthetically, it's hard to say that Tetris Deluxe is an unqualified improvement over black and white Tetris. Besides the eye-searing color scheme, Tetris Deluxe also makes some questionable changes to its soundscape. Hip Tanaka's chiptune take on traditional Russian music has been replaced by alternate music that lacks the iconic appeal of classic Tetris themes. But more crucially, the music here can be obstructive and disruptive. Each theme has four different iterations, three of which kick in to denote a critical state of block debris in your well. As your blocks rise toward the kill line, the current theme grows more urgent, a choice presumably intended to provide helpful feedback, but one that ultimately proves jarring. Tetris is a game about getting into the zone and letting your mind and muscles work in unison to the steady cadence of falling blocks, and the constant ups and downs of the soundtrack interrupt that flow. I suppose this is a case of your mileage may vary, but I find it the most disruptive element of an otherwise excellent rendition of Tetris. And really, minor quibbles aside, this is a great take on Tetris. There are no outlandish gameplay gimmicks here, like say, a rotating well, or a little explorer who climbs the blocks as you play. It's basically just pure Tetris, with some alternate quick play modes and some remarkably poor color choices. As a release, Tetris Deluxe definitely had less impact than the original Tetris did, but it's not really fair to compare the two. More than nine years after the debut of the OG Game Boy, the shock and novelty of both portable gaming and on-the-go puzzle games had long since faded. But as a baseline for comparison between the new Game Boy Color and its grayscale predecessor, Tetris Deluxe works quite nicely. This version of Tetris offers a lot that wasn't in the older version, both in terms of tech and play formats, and it certainly does include a lot more color. 
Thanks to its transitional design, it remains one of the more unusual interpretations of Tetris. In short, it's a game that was worth playing in 1998, and it's a game that holds up pretty well here in 2019. If it's been largely overshadowed by older and newer Tetris releases, well, that too speaks for the nature of the console it was designed for. The Game Boy Color was a half step forward for Nintendo, a placeholder until its 32-bit handheld ambitions could be better realized. In other words, a system that suffers from middle child syndrome between the original and advanced Game Boys. And as for Game Boy Works Color itself, welcome! This series jumps forward in time eight years from the current Game Boy Works series and will tackle games designed specifically for Game Boy Color, whether exclusively or as hybrid carts. Game Boy Works Color will be following global chronological release order, but it will focus primarily on the US library, with international-only releases usually being contained to roundup episodes. By the time the Game Boy Color arrived, the games industry had grown considerably from where it was at the outset of the 90s, and there is a lot of low-grade filler on the platform, even more so than on Game Boy. Going forward, I'll be alternating between original and color Game Boy retrospectives. I haven't abandoned the original Game Boy, but sometimes a guy just needs a break from black and white puzzlers. Next time on Game Boy Works Color, we'll look at a puzzler that doesn't hold up quite so well. 